Now, height and athleticism, those are things that you can't control. But when it comes to skill work, reads, ball handling, shooting, conditioning, consistency, efficiency, that comes from repetition. And when you do that, that stays with you. That's muscle memory. My ducks, my swans, welcome to the pond. Congratulations, you got that Division One scholarship, or maybe this is D2, maybe this is D3, maybe you a high schooler listening to this trying to get insight, maybe you a middle schooler, you are going to be a Division One athlete and you get insight, maybe you're a former Division One athlete, D2, D3, NBA player, or maybe you're just a fan or a parent. Whatever it is, I'm about to provide you information that I don't hear a lot of people talking about because I'm going to give it to you from the coach's perspective, the things that I used to tell kids when they went on official visits because when you are a college coach, you know who is going to tell you the real and who isn't very, very quickly on any basketball staff in any basketball organization. And this is invaluable information for anyone who is going to be going on official visits. So if you have any one like that in your family share this to them right now if you have any kids at your coaching kids at your church whatever it is in your community that you think are going to be college athletes or they aspire to be just share this with them right now the fact that you're going to share this and the title is about division one athletes that might be the fuel that they need to get to that point Right now, I'm watching the quarterback documentary on Netflix, and Kirk Cousins was writing down his goals when he was in high school, and his dad was one of his coaches. So his dad used to do scouting reports for the entire team at the end of the, of the year. So his dad did a scout report on him and all the strengths and weaknesses that Kirk has now, that's the same thing he had in high school. But at the end of the scout report, his dad told him, if you really work on this, X, Y, and Z, wooty wooty whoop, you can become an all-state player. And Kirk Cousins said that was super empowering for him to hear from his father, like, man, he thinks I could be all-state. That's big time. And I can imagine that. Like, if you got somebody who you really love that really believes in your athletic ability, that is the fuel that you need to get to the next level. So I say that to say share this so they can follow and subscribe to this podcast because it's invaluable information for basketball players. The first thing that every single athlete needs to do when they go on their official visits is they need to take every single visit. As of 2023, the rules are if you get offered a scholarship, blah, 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 whatever, you could take up to five official visits. The reason I say take every single official visit because this might be the only time in your life that you get to see these campuses, you get to see these games, you get to go to these parts of these countries, parts of the, of the country. Now, I'm telling you this as someone, if you have a lot of offers, if you have a lot of offers, then you need to take all of your visits. If you do not have a lot of offers, if you're someone who is struggling to get offers, or maybe you know your development's a little bit late, you just haven't got the exposure that you need to, maybe it's a job Morant situation, you don't really need to play any games, okay? Whatever's in front of you, you need to take. Don't wait on something else. But if you have an abundance of offers, you need to take every single visit because that's going to give you invaluable intel not just about the college basketball game, but about the business of basketball in general. And when you go on every single official visit, these are the things that you need to do. First thing you need to do is you need to make sure you talk to the bench warmers. You're going to talk to the stars. They're going to have you with the guy who is on the billboards and who is, you know, in the front cover of the media guy who might have been all-conference or all-American, who got the biggest NIL deal, who got the cloud on campus, who got the dopest car on campus, got the flyest girl on campus. Like, they're going to have you with him but that ain't that might not be you there ain't no telling what he had to do to get in that position there ain't no telling what basketball protection situation he got going on where he able to do that you got to be talking to the dudes that's at the end of the bench the dudes that don't never get in unless it's a victory cigar okay the dudes that are all walk-ons and they're gonna go on to be coaches and doctors and lawyers and accountants and agents and everything else professional basketball is not in the cards for them but they have leveraged their talent enough to get a Division I scholarship to a program that is recruiting you. So, therefore, they don't get preferential treatment. Some of those dudes are normal-sized kids. So, when they walk around campus, they don't look like basketball players. When they show up to the rec, they might be getting busted because they just not really like that like that. They might come across a dude like me and my homeboys. Like, when we – when. 
I went to IU. <clears throat> when the dudes from the team used to come to the hyper, it, I'm taking your head off. I'm taking your head off. I don't care. Yeah, whatever. You're not really going hard. Listen, bro, you D1. You is the best competition in this radius, in this area, in this city. I got to see what it is. You know, and, you know, sometimes you get torched, but a lot of times I didn't. Football players are the same way, but, couldn't, but they couldn't hoop anyway. But anyways, you need to go and you need to talk to the dudes who are at the end of the bench because they're going to give you the real. They're going to tell you everything about the coach. They're going to tell you about the coach's wife. They're going to tell you about the academic advisor. They're going to tell you about the athletic director. They're going to tell you about how it is on campus when it's winning, how it is on campus when you're losing. They're going to tell you about people that might have got kicked off. They're going to tell you every situation because they really don't have anything to lose like that, right? If coach kicked me off the team, I'm going to just be a regular student here and I'm going to go on my career anyway. It's not like the head coach is dangling their career in front of them. He's dangling the scholarship, but not really their career. And to be quite honest, for who the head coach is and what his responsibilities are, he really does not have the time to invest in those guys the same way that he needs to invest in the guys that are going to help him win because those are the guys that are going to keep his job. The next thing you need to do when you go on an official visit, you need to go to a class. And they're going to have you go to certain classes. But if I was you, I would go and ask for a specific class that you want to go to. Just think of a topic, even if it's a graduate class, and see how they handle it. Because I'm pretty sure no matter who you were, if you were a Duke recruit and you told Coach K, like, hey, man, I want to go to one of y'all law classes. Coach K would have got you in. Or maybe Jay Billis would have got you in. Jay Billis played at Duke, and he has a law degree from Duke. Coach K would have made sure that you would have had an opportunity to get into the classes or you would have at least been able to talk to somebody in the law school administration because that's the type of stuff that he wants to over-deliver on. You know, ask some of these coaches, hey, I want to sit in a law class or, you know, I want to sit in a um, – philosophy class or something like that, something that's outside of the realm of what these guys are usually majoring in and see how they handle that. If they give you a bunch of excuses, that's how they're going to handle your academics when you get to that school. That shows you that that coach don't have a lot of political clout. He don't have a lot of juice on campus. He don't have a lot of respect on campus. That shows him his academic advisor is weak and they just cash in a check. That shows him that they don't really care. They just want to get your GPA to the point where their APR, they're not going to get in trouble and that coach can get his bonus. That's all he's going to do. He's not going to go above and beyond for you academically because that really doesn't matter to him. That doesn't help him win or lose basketball games in his mind outside of y'all getting suspended or scholarships getting taken away from him because of APR. So why should I invest my time and energy into that? The same way as why should I invest my time and energy to the dudes that are at the end of the bench when they ain't the ones that's on the court that's going to help me win. These are little context clues that you can start picking up on that allows you to see how this coach really is. Number three, you need to get up shots late. If you want to be a great college basketball player, if you want to get to college, I wish somebody would have told me this when I was 10, 11 years old. If you want to play high-level varsity basketball, you have to be working out on your own. And now y'all have so many resources just on YouTube and Instagram alone where you can literally put together your own summer workout and you can literally get – NBA assistant coaches like Phil Handy, who really breaks down ball handling and footwork and protecting the ball and passing drills, like all these things that you had to imagine and create when, when I was younger. Now you have NBA coaches that are giving this advice away for free. And you need to develop some sort of workout that you love doing on your own. For me, when I decided that like basketball is going to be a love language and I'm going to just have whatever relationship with it that throws at me, when I got to fresh, when I got to IU my freshman year, I needed to find a safe place for me on that campus, right? I had been waiting to go to college. I just got out of a relationship. My first time I'd ever got my heart broken really bad. I was away from my parents. I was, my sister was in the Air Force, so she was across the water. She was in Japan. You know, none of my friends I went to high school with went to college with me, even though I went to IU, which is crazy because my high school was like a direct feeder into IU. And so I was really there by myself. And what I used to do every single day, I would go to my three classes. Once I got out of classes, I would grab my ball, grab my bag, 
put on a sweatsuit, walk across to the Hyper. And this is when everybody used to go hoop at the SRSC because the SRSC was the newer gym. The Hyper was the older gym. And it was this gym that had like 24 courts inside of it. And so I would go in there. I knew that weight room since it was older. A lot of people wouldn't be in there. Go down there, get me like a lift in for an hour, get out, grab my ball, and I would shoot around for an hour and a half. And I would go through scenarios in my head, like if I played for Carolina and I went up against Duke, you know, I would go, uh, <laughs> I'll have scenarios in my head, like if I actually got a chance to play varsity basketball, JV basketball, freshman basketball at North Central, like I literally was in there just making it my safe haven, making it my sanctuary. People would come over and ask me if I wanted to play fives. I'm like, <clears throat> nah. I'm good because it was just something about me being on the court by myself. I started extending my range. I started really getting my shot down. And what I started seeing, and this was just for me doing it as a therapeutic thing just to clean up my thoughts. When I started playing fives, my game was sharp. My jump shot was sharp. Like, my range was extended. I knew what my moves were. And this was before I had any sort of guidance or basketball education and training. This was just from me going and shooting around every single day for therapy. If you combine that, finding the safe place on your basketball court with these plans that exist now, as far as everything that you can get within a workout, you can make yourself essentially into any player that you want to be. Now, height and athleticism, those are things that you can't control. But when it comes to skill work, reads, ball handling, shooting, conditioning, consistency, efficiency, that comes from repetition. And when you do that, that stays with you. That's muscle memory. And so since you're going to have to have that mentality or you're starting to get that mentality or if this is the first time anyone's ever told you, I'm happy as hell that I'm the person that gets to tell you that because nobody ever told me this. So I'll thank you for allowing me to give you this basketball nugget and this basketball wisdom. Now you understand what it takes to get to that level, to get to whatever the next level is in your basketball career. And when you get to college, it ain't going to be no different. Just because you're a Division I player now, that doesn't mean that you got to stop working out. You stop working out, you're going to be stop playing Division I. Or since you were such a high recruit, you're going to be forced to transfer. That's really what's going to happen now. You got to go even harder. And when you're a Division I player, you got managers, you got GAs, you got ops guys, assistant coaches, all that, who need to be rebounding for you. So when you go on your official visit, you tell them that you want to get up shots late. You want to see how it is to go to the gym at 10, 10 p.m., at 11 p.m. Because this is what you're really going to do. And when you ask them that, you see how they react. When I was at VCU, if a recruit would have said that, since we had five GAs and we were working out everybody anyway, and we had a video coordinator and an ops guy, they literally would have came into the office and said, hey, which one of y'all want to work out this recruit tonight at, at 10 p.m.? And we would have raised our hands and then now would have been the end of it. We had a system and everything that we needed to, to do. If they would have asked us that at Jacksonville, the staff would have had to act like that we have some sort of system. And what would have ended up happening was the assistant coach would have had to call his wife because the head coach is telling him he needs to call his wife and tell him he ain't going to be coming home early tonight at all. Don't wait up, baby. I'm not going to be home early. I'm not going to be home until after midnight because I got to work out a recruit for the first time ever. Because that's not what they were on at, at Jackson. I can't say we. It's a little bit different. I was on that. But they weren't. And this is just the reality of it. College basketball staffs are disorganized. So that's why I'm trying to tell y'all this right now. See how they react. See what they say. See if they have a system. See who's actually working you out. If the head coach shows up and works you out, you know that's not real. Because there's no way that when you are a student and you are on his team, and you say you want to get up shots at 10 p.m., he's going to leave his family and, and go work you out. He better not be doing that. He's the head coach. He's the CEO. He got other stuff to be worried about than that, working you out. That's what he got his assistant coaches for. They really don't need to be doing that. But see who on a support staff works you out. See what kind of workout it is. See how long that it takes. See how they talk to you. See how they encourage you. See how they suggest you. See their basketball IQ. What suggestions are they giving? What tips are they giving? Does it sound real? Does it sound fake? Does it sound rehearsed? What is it? 
And if you use all these context clues for everything that I've said, you will be able to have a much more accurate read on the coaching staff, the team, the athletic administration, and the university than anything else that you're going to do on official visit. Watch this again and make sure you do all of this when you're on your way to your official visit. When, if you are on your way to your official visit right now, you are in the car, you are in the airport, you need to really lock in. You need to listen to this again. You need to really lock in. You need to watch this again. And as I'm saying these things again, I want you to envision yourself doing these things. There's power in visualization. You're an athlete. You know this. If you don't, I'm glad I'm the one to tell you. There's power in visualization. You have to visualize yourself doing these things. I didn't visualize myself. I let people take that away from me. I let people take the power of visualization away from me when I was a teenager when it came to basketball. I wish I could have kept on. I wish I could have kept that, held on to that. Look at Fred Van Fleet's story. That's the power of visualization, where he's at. You are on your way to your visit. Lock in and do all these things. So you have an accurate read on these people that are promising you the world. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. I'm out the pond. Y'all stay true.